Amen. It's just so good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to hear the testimonies. Uh, Brother Tony, God bless you. It's like every Sunday as well, we hear a different testimony. Amen. Thanks, Linda, for the passing the words on. Amen. Just know that God is moving in wonderful ways. Uh, we have, do have one more Sunday, but we're coming to the end of the year, but it's just like God is pouring out so many blessings on us, and uh, just can't wait till uh, we get to the next prayer meeting, amen, just to call upon the Lord and see more of what God is going to do. Uh, the message today is uh, Mary's song. This is a prayer of praise uh, by Mary. Uh, very few uh, lines, um, just to give the backstory. So when the angel announced to Mary that she would be the one to deliver the Savior to the world, uh, his choice of words, the words that the angel spoke, the uh, angel spoke, evoked the imagery of the Holy Spirit's work during the moment of creation. From the message in Genesis 1, 2, and 3, it says, uh, Earth was a soup of nothingness, a bottomless emptiness, an inky blackness. God's spirit brooded like a bird above the watery abyss. God spoke light and light appeared. And uh, at the time of the announcement in Luke 1.35, it says, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. The same imagery of the Holy Spirit brooding, hovering over, giving birth to an entity. And first it was called light, and now it was called the Son of God. Amen. And upon hearing the angelic announcement, there was obviously disbelief at first, but by the end of that conversation with the angel, Mary, Mary was totally convinced and without a shadow of a doubt. And we pick up the story with Mary having gone to her cousin Elizabeth's house Elizabeth, who was six months pregnant with John the Baptist, the prophet who would announce Jesus Christ to the public just before he would begin, Jesus would begin his ministry some 30 years later. And when Mary appeared at Elizabeth's doorstep, John the Baptist began jumping up and down, still in the womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and began to prophesy. And we'll compare her expressions uh, to Mary's. In uh, verse 42, the same chapter 1, in a loud voice he exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, a baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. So the Holy Spirit is revealing a lot to Elizabeth and then later to Mary. But both of them, upon this greeting, they both had reason to believe that this uh, this was true uh, because a miracle had already taken place. Elizabeth, who was well past her childbearing years, was soon to give birth. And with miracle after miracle, God was in the process of building a record of his faithfulness and power and might. And when the cousins see each other, they both start praising God. And this is Mary's prayer of praise. I'll read through it and then we'll go back and 
look at the four sections of this praise, of this song. Verse 46, and Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble estate of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers. And so we'll take this song stanza by stanza. But first, in verse 46, the first part, it says, And Mary said, and Mary said, just simply Mary said, Elizabeth was ecstatic suddenly filled with the Holy Spirit when Mary arrives. And it was under the influence of the Holy Spirit that Elizabeth recognizes the fact that Mary is carrying the Savior of the world. But Mary at this point is calmly filled with the Holy Spirit, having her ecstatic moment with the angel earlier. But she draws on, Mary draws on the word of God in 1 Samuel where Hannah also had a miracle performed in her life, and her prayer is also recorded. I'll just read 1 Samuel 2, the first two verses, and Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. In the Lord my horn is lifted high, my mouth boasts over my enemies, for I delight in your deliverance. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. And this is similar to the first stanza of Mary's song where she says, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. The first part, or this whole song, called the Magnificat, uh, meaning magnifies or glorifies, taken from the Latin. And so, my soul magnifies the Lord. And this song, Mary's song, called the, simply the Magnificat. And it's solely a prayer of praise in four parts. And she signifies the Lord by expressing deep feelings of adoration and joy and gratitude. And in her expression, she acknowledges that God is her Savior, but that she does not deserve what's happening to her. Yes, she was a descendant of royalty, but at this time she was still a nobody. And it's only by the grace of God that she's been chosen for such a task as this to be the instrument of God to show his love to the world. Yes, only by the grace of God, nothing special about her warranted or merited God visiting her, only by the grace of God. And that means that any one of us could have been equally favored like Mary was. And actually, in fact, each one of us is as favored like Mary in that we can all rejoice just like Mary did because God looked down upon us too and saved us Amen. though we were so unworthy. Amen. And we too can be in such awe of God that we would cry out any time in deep adoration and offer our praises to our Savior. So it doesn't matter that simply because God worked a miracle in Mary's life, that doesn't mean that she's somebody special. It means that we can expect God to do work miracles in our own lives. 
And we can start crying out to God. Hallelujah. And in that same moment of praise, we can be filled with the Spirit and receive special insights where the foggy mist in our own lives dissipate and what God is doing all around us and through us and in us becomes clear because the Holy Spirit is just moving stuff away and we see him more clearly. She says, the second stanza, for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. Great things meaning giving birth to the Savior of the world. Part of the work of the Holy Spirit is to open us up, open up our eyes to the true nature of God and all the words will come to us just like they did to Mary. This is the Spirit helping her like it will help us in our prayers since we don't know what to pray for, but the Spirit does. And in this case with Mary, she offered up praise because of God being mighty, because he is holy, because he is full of mercy. And as we walk with God, the Holy Spirit will reveal even more of God's attributes and make them more real to us. And then she continues with the third stanza. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. And still under the influence of the Holy Spirit, Mary's song then celebrates the mighty results of God's love for the world. But Mary is visualizing the future victories of Jesus Christ while describing him as already having won them. This is real faith when the promises of the future are so real that they seem like an accomplished fact. This is not spiritual hocus-pocus or the same as calling things into existence. This is absolute trust that what God has said is true. Mary can see things that don't exist yet as if they had already been accomplished in the past. This is ultimate faith. She saw the glorious arm referring to the coming deliverer. But she saw that he would choose the nobodies of the world like herself to confound the somebodies. She saw the proud and the mighty would be put down. The men of low degree, the poor and the humble would be exalted. She saw the hungry being fed and the rich turned away. She saw the same things recited in the Sermon on the Mount and saw all of these as already being done. In the last part of the song, Mary refers to Abraham who went up to the mountain to offer up his son as a sacrifice. But with all confidence, Abraham told his servants, wait here for us. We will return. Father and son will return because God himself will provide the lamb. The prophets of old took their cue from Abraham and believed that God himself would send the Messiah to deliver his people. The Messiah was not yet born, but Mary saw this as already done. And she says in this last stanza, he has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers. However long it takes, even if it takes thousands of years, as it did in this case from Abraham to Mary, God will keep his word. God has never let his promises fail. Second Peter 3 picked up on this and said, But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like a day. 
The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. And so in the fullness of time, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, was born. And he was born and fulfilled everything that was written about him. And he's still calling men and women of low estate to come to him, to see his might, to see his power, to accept his love and mercy, to experience his truth and faithfulness. And he's still saying, come, won't you come and be saved? Amen. Jesus Christ is calling us still. Won't you come? Let us stand as we join in our hymn of invitation. <laughs>